Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sophie. If you're new here or you don't know me, I am a self-employed graphic designer. I've been in business now for five years and have had over one year now of being a full-time graphic designer. So it has been quite a journey and it's been quite a bit since I have done a little day in the life. So things have been really, really busy lately. If you watched my 2024 goal setting video, you probably saw that I've been trying to Kind of like scale back a little bit but not like i just want to feel like i have more time in my schedule and i don't want to feel so rushed to do things so i want to scale back in that way so i just want to be more intentional about it with a smaller group of clients rather than a larger group and one of the big things that i've been trying to do to make my schedule feel less overwhelming each week is not putting too many tasks on my weekly to-do list and being realistic and understanding that not everything has to get done in a day, not everything has to get done this week, and it'll work out, it will be okay. Today, I am taking you along for a little day in the life, and I'm gonna be showing you a couple of fun things, talking about some stuff, how I find clients for graphic design work, for brand design work. I just finished doing a series all about brand design from start to finish, showing you branding for a real client, which if you haven't watched that yet, I will link it down below so you can check it out. But from that, I've gotten a lot of questions about how do you find your first graphic design client? How do you find your first brand design client? Um, a lot of people have messaged me about that on Instagram, which is the platform I have like the largest audience on. And so I get a lot more questions on there than I do on YouTube, but I'm starting to get more questions around here, which is kind of fun. But whether it's on social media or in my daily life, truly one of the most asked questions that I get is how do you find brand design clients? How do you find graphic design clients? So we're gonna talk about that. I'm also doing a fun little Valentine's Day uh, card and little like sweet thing to send to my clients in the mail so I'm doing Valentine's today and I've got the cutest little illustration that I made for my little homemade Valentine's Day card that I'm gonna be sending to my clients so I can't wait to show you guys that I'm gonna be going to a coffee shop today and I've got a full full list today so I know I just said at the beginning of this video that I'm like trying to not put too much on my to-do list but Mondays are always that day where I try to get done as much as possible so I've got a really full to-do list today so I'm gonna just be taking you along for all of this today and if any of this stuff interests you definitely stick around I'm gonna be sharing some juicy tricks of the trade I guess or just some of my top tips for finding your first brand design clients first things first though I need to spend some time in my Bible uh, if you are not new here you've seen me talk about just my journey with trying to be consistently in my Bible every single day and you have probably seen that it's something that I've definitely improved on a lot in the last year but if I'm being completely honest these last few weeks probably I've been really really bad about starting my day in the word and I can tell I can tell how it how it is affecting my days and affecting my life when I don't start the day in the word so I sometimes feel weird about like recording myself or sharing myself doing a devotional but I don't do any of it to be like oh look at me I'm you know reading my Bible I more so do it just to encourage others and literally just to share that this is part of my day but I have to be honest that it has not been like a really regular part of my day over these last few weeks. I have been kind of just like maybe a couple times a week in my Bible. Last week I honestly, I think I was in my Bible one time other than Sunday. And I, it's just interesting, it's really incredible how I can just really feel a difference in just how I feel as a person and how my days go and the perspective that I go into my day with when I haven't made time for that. So I really, really, really just wanna make sure that I'm continuing to make a good habit out of that. It's so funny because I felt like the first few weeks of January, I was doing so good with some of my habits that I had been working on. These last couple weeks, for some reason, I've just been motivated to do nothing. And the sun is out today, which is like huge because January in Indiana was actually the cloudiest January we've had in 25 years. And I was like, oh, so that's why I've been so upset or like that's why I've been so unmotivated because it's just been like cold and gray and cloudy and basically almost every day I've been going into a coffee shop. Usually I only go once a week. Sometimes I don't even go into a coffee shop. Recently, I just like can't get things done at home. I don't know why, but 
I, I think I just need a change of scenery. If you're struggling to be productive, give yourself a change of scenery because it really helps a lot. I found a new coffee shop that I really like and it's nice and warm and cozy, but it's like, I just can't get work done at home right now. Like I just don't even want to. I haven't even tried to get work done at home because I don't want to. It's not that I don't work at home at all, but for the most part, like 10 to three o'clock, that's when I've been going to coffee shops. I don't know, you guys. I, I'm just like, I hope I can get my mojo back here, but I just haven't been super motivated, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and read my Bible. Still going through the study of Ruth that I just, I haven't gotten very far into this. You, you might've seen this in a previous video. I just haven't gotten very far into it because I've been so inconsistent. So I need to get back into this. I am on, week two day five and I really need to get through this one because there is another series that I'm gonna be starting for Lent and he's watching over me tonight as he takes away my fears oh, oh I know you and I praise you got my arms open for your finished my morning Bible time. Now it is time to go to a coffee shop. I'm gonna get ready for my meeting with my assistant so we can get all prepared for the week. And I'm probably gonna get a bagel and cream cheese so I can get a little breakfast, a little coffee. It's gonna be a great day. It is almost 2 p.m. I am already back from the coffee shop. I decided to come back a little bit earlier than what I usually do. I feel like sometimes I just stay there and like camp out until three o'clock. I'm gonna head inside and make some lunch. I got a lot done today. So some of the biggest priorities on my to-do list today, uh, I actually will tell you what was on my list and what I finished. Had a great meeting with my assistant as always. She's the best. Here is everything that I have done and crossed off the to-do list for Monday. I did a cover photo for a client for their Facebook. Um, I updated a client's website. She had some new uh, branding shoot photos to add to the website, so I added that to her website. I did some carousel posts for that exact same client. I made some highlight cover edits for another client. Also did some big website edits for my client that is a coffee shop. And then did some remaining edits for Grafton Peak on their website. They were the brand that I actually featured in my brand design process video where I took you like step by step through the whole process of giving their company um, and both of their brands its own branding. So now we're finishing up their website and just kind of putting on some final tweaks. So when I get inside, I'm just gonna record a quick video walkthrough for that client to show her the changes that I've made, little tweaks I need to make to an illustration for a client. And I've got some social content to edit together at a website that I need to uh, probably complete like two more pages in for today. I need to get that website done this week because I have two additional websites that are coming on my plate. So I have, they're actually both wedding venues. It's so funny. So I've got one wedding venue that I just did branding for that I'm doing website for. And then I have another wedding venue that I'm doing website design for. They do need branding done, um, but I don't know that that's in their budget right now. So we're starting with website. I don't usually do that, but I am making an exception to this because they're a client that I know a little bit on a personal level, so I'm making an exception to it, but it'll be interesting to see how it goes because part of the reason why it's easy to put together these beautiful websites is because when we do that after doing the branding process, it really makes the website like a super smooth, seamless thing to put together. So it's gonna be a challenge to do that without having those branding foundations laid before entering into that project, so. I hope that that wasn't like a mistake on my part. But, and then I'm gonna be doing my little Valentine's to my clients. So that is a lot to get through um, between two and like five o'clock. But I don't know, I think there might be a chance that I could do it. I need to like get inside and really get cracking and get to work if I wanna make it happen. Now. Also, you might have noticed or you might not have noticed, but I am in a new car. I am in a new 
car. My husband and I bought a new car to replace my old one. There's so much technology in this car that it's just like so new to me. Like finally having a backup camera, finally having Apple CarPlay, even just being able to press a button to start the car instead of like having to turn the key in the ignition. I love that. But this car was like a huge, huge, huge symbol of just like hard work and accomplishment. We worked really hard for this. And you probably saw if you watched my 2024 goal setting video, that was one of my goals for 2024 was to get a new car. I only had one owner before, took really good care of it. So honestly, it feels brand new. It's the color interior that I want. Wanted. This is, they call it their uh, oyster interior. It is a BMW. <laughs> Even just saying that out loud, I'm like, what? I don't know, I just can't believe it. But it was like my dream car. All I wanna do is just like get in the car. I think that's part of why I've been like going to coffee shops is because I just wanna get in the car and use it. I'm also so excited to finally have a sunroof again. You can see Dolly's little uh, car seat in here. Um, but y'all, I just, I love this car so much. I am obsessed with it, truly, and just so thankful. So thankful, so grateful. The Lord has just provided in such crazy ways for my business, and so I'm just so thankful to be able to have the luxury of enjoying this and just kind of feels good to like enjoy the fruits of my labor because last year was really, really hard. At some point, Brian and I do want to have children, and so this is kind of like the perfect car to transition into having like a family vehicle but I also was like I wanted to be nice though like I want to have a nice ride because I just felt like I worked so hard and this last year 2023 completely blew my expectations for my business out of the water and like nobody helped us with this like we did this on our own so yeah I don't know you guys this car is like like I could just sit in here like can I just sit in here and work on my car I kind of wanted to do that I'm not going to I'm gonna go inside but you get the idea. So this is so extra, but I got these little BMW cup holders. And then I got this little um, case for my keys from Amazon. And I'm honestly, I mean, I got it just because it looks bougie and I like that. But I'm kind of glad that I got this because I dropped my keys on the floor the other day. And I was like, oh no. And like it didn't damage them at all because they're in this case. So I'm a big fan of this. just finished working on some social content for the coffee house as a client of mine. I now have a grocery pickup order to go get and then my sister and I are gonna go for a walk. So that I was not planning for, but I'm always down for a walk, especially when it's actually sunny outside and I know I need the exercise. So we're gonna take Dolly for a W and it's gonna be super fun. And then the other things that were on my to-do list today, I will just have to get to them after the W and I'm saying W because if I say W-A-L-K, Dolly will start getting really excited and I need to do my grocery pickup before I meet my sister for a W. <laughs> We have to speak in code around here. Do you have to do that with your dog? If you have a dog, let me know in the comments. I just got back from such a fun walk. It is so gorgeous outside. The sun is shining and it is incredible to me how much a sunny day completely like lifts my spirits, changes my mood entirely. I am so thankful for it. I've got a couple things I need to finish up here quickly before I start on my Valentine's for my clients. And I've got a couple things I need to get done before I finish out the day.
dark out and the sun goes down, I wanted to end this video by sharing with you a few ways that you can get graphic design clients or brand design clients to your business. First of all, I just want to say I do have a free guide that's all about how to attract clients to your business. So if you're looking to get your first graphic design client or your first brand design client, or you're looking to get your next client, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be just graphic design, but chances are if you're still watching this video, you're interested in graphic design, this free guide will help you get your next client or your first client. Definitely check that out at the link below in the description. Also, I'm going to just share a couple of things that you can do specifically if you are in graphic design looking to get another brand design client or your first brand design client like how do you go about that that's one of the questions that i get asked honestly the most there's a couple things that i would say first off if you have never ever done brand design before i would honestly recommend looking for somebody that you know or are connected to or maybe a friend of a friend somebody that would be willing to hire you either at like maybe a discounted rate since it's your first project i am not opposed to people doing something for free for like their first project in exchange for a testimonial that is such a great way to get actual written testimonials about your work and get some experience under your belt with a real client. It's not something that I am advocating for like continued work for free by any means. I made the mistake of working for exposure for like a year of my career. Um, I wasn't doing that with every project I did, but there was one ongoing work that I had at the time where all of it was for free and all of it was done for exposure and exposure does not pay the bills. So I'm not recommending that you like go on that end and do, you know, free work for an entire year, but for a single project, that could definitely be beneficial for you. It gives you a testimonial and it gives your foot gets your foot in the door and gives you a chance to really just start practicing and experimenting because the reality is like when you're first taking on a brand design client, your first ever brand design that you ever do, probably going to be a project that you look back on in 5 years and it makes you cringe. That's just kind of like the truth. I feel like that is just what happens for like every brand designer. Our first brand that we ever design is usually not our most favorite one that we've ever done long term. With each project that you're doing, you're growing and improving, especially when you're first starting out. We've all started somewhere and we've all had those experiences. Next thing that I would recommend doing is just telling people that you are starting to take on brand design clients and seeing what happens. Being vocal about it on both social media and in real life, especially in real life. I feel like you're talking about it too much on social media. That's not a bad thing. It honestly sometimes can feel for us like we are just talking so much about our offers and the reality is is that somebody that sees your Instagram story one day doesn't mean that they're going to see it the next day and just because you post something on Instagram today doesn't mean that every single person in your audience is going to see it. So just know that online it's okay to talk about things more than once. Obviously you don't want your whole Instagram feed to only be about selling to people but I do believe though that it is okay to like really emphasize your offers and talk about them often. In terms of sharing about your offers and your services in person, I honestly feel like I have built my book of business from more from like in-person interactions now than ever before. When I was first starting out, it was in 2020. Everybody was at home because of COVID. So everybody was just like online and working from home constantly on social media. So it was so easy to get discovered compared to what it is now. And that's just like not the case anymore. So we can't be continuing to expect things that worked in 2020. We can't be expecting those things to continue working the exact same way that they did then in 2024. It doesn't mean that your online presence isn't still important. It's extremely important and it's definitely still Instagram to me is a marketplace and it still is. It was a marketplace in 2020. It's a marketplace in 2024. So it's a great way to get yourself found, to get people to see your work. It's a great way to make money. But really what I have seen happen with my business as it has evolved, as the social media landscape has evolved, a lot of my business is now coming from word of mouth, which does come from years of experience and providing a top notch, high quality customer experience, but then also from the interactions and the conversations that I'm having with people in person. And I'll give you like a very small example of this, but even today I was talking to my sister and I just was telling her, I was like, you know what? My dream uh, website and brand design client is actually a cattle farm. Like I, that is one of my dream clients. I really want to do website and branding for a cattle farm. 
and my sister has a herd share that she is part of and so she can get like fresh milk and meat she was like i'm actually going to see my farmer tonight and he was talking to us about how he wants to get a new website like would you want me to say something to him and so i gave her my business card and she is going to share it with him and i asked her specifically i was like i haven't done a cattle farm before but i've done at least one wedding barn brand and web design project and then i also am like in the middle of finishing up a second one right now so i'm not a stranger to barns i just haven't done like a cattle farm yet so i just told her that and like lo and behold there is a potential opportunity who knows if anything's even going to happen with that but just saying that and talking about it openly and just like sharing that with somebody what i believe is the power in that isn't manifestation i just believe that there's a lot of good things that can happen when you simply just share with people like what you want to do because you never know who is going to have a brother that has a sister that has a friend that has a cousin that might need something that you're doing so i feel like it could be really easy to take what i just said and be like oh my gosh she manifested that like the power of manifestation i do not believe in the power of manifestation i believe in the power of the lord but i do not believe in like my own power to like speak things into existence so i just want to make that very clear please do not like misinterpret what i just said and take that as like power in manifestation because i just so do not agree with that i don't believe in that i do not endorse that i'm just saying though that like when you tell people what your goals are who your dream clients are it's like highly likely that if you tell enough people there's going to be somebody that knows somebody that is in your target market that could utilize your services so just like opening your mouth and telling people about what you do and what you have to offer can be a really really great way to bring in a brand design client other thing that you can do is cold pitching which this one is a little bit harder to convert but i've actually had a ton of success with it it's something that i teach my students uh in our creative entrepreneur accelerator program actually in the middle of a session right now of a three month long program um, but it's something that i teach them and i would say my biggest takeaway for if you're going to cold pitch somebody is that your pitch shouldn't actually actually be cold so before you ever send that outreach email taking the time to like interact with them on social media if they have a storefront that's nearby to you that you can like go visit like actually going in in person introducing yourself asking the owner for coffee doing things to like actually warm up the relationship before you ever actually pitch to them is such a helpful way to bring in new leads and actually convert people into clients it's really really hard to cold pitch people if you're basically just giving them like a cold call so I kind of feel like the secret to cold pitching is for it to not actually be cold and for it to be like warm like a warm lead so you want them to be familiar with you and have a certain level of like trust and um, you ever hear people talk about that like no like and trust factor we want them to feel like they know you or like you a little bit even if they don't 100 fully know you or trust you all the way yet at least we want them to start to like get to know you start to like you things like that just so that you're not coming out of the blue and coming off like a solicitor those would be some of my quick tips for finding your next brand design client oh and one more thing um a way to do digitally on social media like what i did where i told my sister about how like oh my dream clients blah 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 and then that led to a potential opportunity if you don't really know like who to talk to in your personal life about that you could literally make a reel where you could say i'm so and so i do this and these are my dream clients and you can make a reel where it flashes to like different pictures of whatever industries your dream clients are in that's a really great way to attract people to your business i've done that before and it actually got so much engagement on it, it just kind of gets people's attention when you're like hey this is what i do this is who i do it for and like this is who i really really want to do it for like these are my dream clients and then they know that you're speaking directly to them there are so many other things i could say about how to attract your dream clients i could do like a whole video about this so if you're wanting like a more in-depth look at how to attract dream clients or brand design clients to your business when you're first starting out whatever stage you might be in let me know in the comments below and i'd be happy to make one but otherwise Thank you guys so much for joining me for today's video it was so much fun to chat with you i had a lot of fun making my little valentines for my clients i've still got several that i need to write i think i did two and i have like 10 more that i need to write but it's really fun to make little happy mail things for clients and to send them like a little valentine's day card because i usually send a christmas card to all my clients but i did not get the chance to do that this past year because things were just too crazy busy so i was like you know what we can just do a valentine's day card and hopefully it will brighten their day it was really fun to design the illustration on the front too and i love making cards from home i love making homemade cards because it's just it's more special than like going to cvs and just like picking up any old card that you could get but i had a really 
really specific message and vision for it so i was able to just make it exactly what i wanted it to be which was nice thank you guys so much for watching another video on my channel or if this was your first time watching i hope you continue watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you like this content if you like this video if you like me if you like graphic design i don't know if you're interested in graphic design or owning a small business i feel like you would like it here i'll see you next time bye guys